Well, I am Jean Haley, and this is my buddy Jane. Yeah. And well, that reminds me, what did they used to say on uh, Howdy Judy? Isn't that the way they introduced the other person? I don't know. It shows my age. But. Yeah. So it's like this I, is my I, buddy. I, I prefer partner in crime. Okay, okay. partner in crime. It's my partner in cr crime, Jane. And uh, We've been teaching the mindful self-compassion class at Common Ground for several years now, as well as leading this group. We're happy you're here. Um, so tonight we're gonna do some uh, movement and so we're gonna do some practice and I'm gonna offer some reflections and we'll just see where it goes from there. I will say up front, <coughs> excuse me, that I'm on the ninth day of a retreat so I'm a little whacked out. <laughs> um, and if you, yeah, I see Jessica going like this. So if I don't always make sense, it's because, you know, they say that when you're on retreat, a part of your brain kind of shuts down. Uh, the, so uh, just uh, tell me if I'm not making any sense, <laughs> but I'll try to. Uh, that will be an act of compassion if you do that. Um, so Jane's going to lead us off with uh, an opening grounding meditation, so I'll turn it over to her. Thank you. So I'm just going to start by inviting each one of you to just take a moment to sort of look around the room that you're in, sort of seeing all of the different, maybe just not even naming things, just looking at the forms and the colors and the shapes. And maybe as you do this, sort of plant your feet solidly on the ground if you can and settle in your seat just to feel present. So just allowing yourself to come into a position that feels comfortable. And letting your eyes close either partially or fully. And let us begin by taking a few deep breaths together, if you would like, just to allow us to start to settle into the body and into being in this moment. Taking in the breath deep and full, letting the belly expand, filling the lungs, and then gently and fully letting the air release. Taking deep, full breaths is one of the ways that we allow the body to just relax and to settle. Just feeling the full, deep, full breaths. And then allowing, just allowing the breath to come into a natural rhythm, whichever feels comfortable for you. And I'd like to invite you now or at any time in this meditation, if you wish, to just place one or perhaps both of your hands over your heart or in any part of your body that might feel comforting or soothing.
And just taking a moment to feel the touch of your hands. The weight of the hands on your body and the warmth of your hands. Just taking a moment to feel the soothing touch of our own hands. This is a practice we do in self-compassion to just remind ourselves that we're not just bringing attention or awareness, but that we're bringing a loving awareness. We're bringing a kind and tender awareness to our bodies, to our breath. I just invite you to leave your hands there or you can allow them to rest comfortably in your lap. And then just bringing awareness inside your body. Maybe just doing a scan of the body and just noticing whatever sensations may be present right now. You may notice that there's pleasant or unpleasant. There may even be discomfort or even pain somewhere in the body. But just see if you can just allow any sensations that you find just to be there. They don't need to be a change or be different. Just allowing the body to feel what it feels. And if there is discomfort of any type, just see if you can acknowledge it. But yet finding a place to rest in the body in which you don't feel overwhelmed by the discomfort. Allowing it space. Whatever you are feeling, this is what it means to have a human body just like this. And as you're feeling into the body, you can begin to notice your breath. Notice your breath moving in and out of the body. Just allowing yourself to feel the breath wherever you feel it most easily. Just allowing it to be very simple, 
feeling the body breathing in and feeling the body breathing out. And as you do this, you can imagine that you can incline towards your own breathing in the same way you might incline towards a young child or a beloved pet. Just inclining towards your own body, towards your own breathing with the same tender awareness that you would offer perhaps a young child or a dear friend. And if you find the mind wanders, as the mind always does, you can just invite it back ever so gently. Come back, come back to offering a kind and loving awareness to the body breathing. And as you do this, perhaps you might become aware of the rhythm of the breath. How the breath has a kind of soothing rhythm. It has a rising and falling, almost like the movement of the sea. It's almost as though the body breathes itself. Just feeling your whole body being gently rocked and caressed by the breath. And if at any time you notice the mind wanders off, you can invite it back in a friendly way. Come back, bringing your attention back to their breath, sensing yourself being rocked by the breath and soothed by the breath. And now just knowing that this soothing rhythmic breath is always here for us. 
I'd like to invite you to release your attention on the breath and just bring your attention back to resting in the body as a whole. And just once again, feeling what it's like to be in your body, to have this human body. Allowing yourself to be just as you are, just like this. And as you hear the sound of the bell, you can gently and slowly open your eyes, moving your body. So I, uh, I was going to spend just a few minutes going over the basics of self-compassion, but since you're all pretty familiar with it, I think Jane really so nicely hit on the high points in that meditation where we got to practice many of the of the tools that we have to offer ourselves kindness. And I've, I've been adding to my toolbox every time I, uh, I listen to another teacher. I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to listen to uh, Nils, was it last night? I think it was last night, yeah. And uh, he was reminding us of two mudras or hand postures I think we could add to our self-compassion toolkit. One is the, the mudra or the hand gesture of touching the earth, which the, the Buddha did, as you may be aware, on the night he was alike, uh, enlightened when Mara or the evil forces within and without uh, asked him what right he had to be enlightened and he touched the earth. And he said, the earth is my witness and the earth shook. So we all have the right, we all deserve to be awake and to feel compassion. So if you ever are questioning that, you can, you can try just touching the earth or touching something that you're sitting in that's connected to the earth as a reminder that you too deserve kindness and you too deserve to be awake. The other uh, hand gesture or mudra that he uh, reminded us of was the putting your hand up or two hands up, you might try it, in response to things that we want to keep away or out or defend ourselves against or stand up against. I think this can be incredibly powerful with everything that we're facing now. So just another thing to keep in mind, it really is an act of self-compassion no, I'm not going to stand for this. No, you can't do this. No, it needs to be another way. So just feeling into that gesture as well. And reminding that we can add that to the other things that Jane invited us to experience with her meditation, the soothing touch and the affectionate breathing and grounding ourselves and all of those other lovely practices. And as a reminder, you all know this, but it's, I think it's important to remind ourselves that what we're doing here is not trying to fix anything. We're not trying to fix what's wrong with us or make it go away. We're just lessening our self judgment and cultivating this attitude of kindness towards our own suffering for no other reason than the fact that we suffer. No other reason than that. And when we can remember to do that, then we, uh, we begin to break down that sense of separation. We don't have to defend ourselves so much. We remember that everyone else in, in this group tonight and in the world is suffering as well, and that we all deserve compassion. So tonight we're going to be, uh, I'll be talking a little bit more about that and then we'll be practicing some more and hopefully that will be a, 
a good reminder for all of us. Jean, I was just going to share once I worked with somebody who worked in corporate America and, you know, and, and in meetings when she would, she would hold her own hand, <laughs> you know, and nobody knew what was going on, but she was, she was holding her own hand. And I've always just loved that. So we can, no matter where we are, we can hold our own hand. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. So speaking of, uh, Jessica was talking about um, humming and did you say shaking also? Yeah. Uh, so movement, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I rock back and forth just I, without intentionally doing it, but we, you know, we rock children. Why can't we rock ourselves? So uh, Jane's going to uh, lead us through some or, or open the space. I don't know what she's going to do for some movement so we can begin to work with our nervous systems and then I'll offer a few reflections and we'll do some more practice. Yeah, so take it away, Jane. I, I really appreciate what you're saying, Jessica, about all those ways we can move and soothe ourselves. So um, I one thing I like that we do, Jean, is we take some time to take care of the body too. And so uh, in this time, I'll give a bit of suggestions of how to move, uh, but just pay attention to what the body might like right now. You might notice, oh, there's this kink or, oh, there's this tiredness. Uh, and again, I invite you to turn off your camera if you want, leave your camera on, whatever you want. And you can do this either sitting down or standing up. So just kind of notice what feels right for you. And, and go ahead and do it. <laughs> so um, a lot of times, um, many of you know Spruce and she does interplay and, and she starts the movement with just allowing our bodies to shake. And like we just shake one hand and maybe shake the other hand and just, uh, and then let that movement sort of, if it feels good to you, move through your body. Oh, shaking all over, maybe shaking your legs, one and then the other, if you're standing up. And then let that just kind of move into like maybe a wiggle. Oh, oh, is your attention in the middle part of your body? Just wiggling. Ah, just noticing what feels good. And let that sort of move into the shoulders. We can hold so much tension in the shoulders and just moving the shoulders however feels good to you. Being careful not to push too hard, just letting them roll and soften. And remember to just to breathe, just to keep breathing as you're moving. And then perhaps letting that movement move into the neck. And you might notice just rolling the neck ever so gently down to the back and to the side, just being very careful. And maybe rolling the neck the other direction if you like. Just noticing breathing and being very gentle, especially with the neck. And then if you'd like, sort of bringing the arms, if this is available to you, bringing the arms all the way up and feeling the feet solidly planted on the ground, maybe even like there's roots going down like a big tree and your arms are like branches reaching up and wiggling the fingers like they're tiny little leaves and just stretching one way. And then the other, however the body wants to stretch, just feeling its full length. Continuing to breathe, noticing what feels good. And then bringing the arms down once again, that's available to you. And then letting your chest just open, opening the heart, if that's available, if that feels okay for you. And then bringing the arms around and giving yourself a big hug, massaging the arms and the shoulders, feeling the skin, 
coming all the way down to your wrists and your hands. All these little muscles in our hands wiggling our fingers. And then maybe just massaging the neck, the base of the skull, massaging the face. We can hold so much tension in our face. Notice where it feels good, maybe in the temples, around the eyes. Maybe even just pressing the ear lobes, scratching the head, tapping the head, whatever feels good, just notice. <sighs> Think about those kitty cats and, and dogs in your life that love to have their heads and their faces scratched. And then just Maybe just stroke the body and release the energy. Stroking and maybe I'm just breathing out, letting things go. And then just for a moment, pausing, not doing a thing and just Noticing how the body is feeling after paying attention to it and moving. And see if there's just one last movement or movements that your body might like. Maybe just touching the chest and saying thank you to the body for all that it does. Maybe one last stretch or wiggle or rub. Maybe just one really big breath. Right. Yeah, so um, I'm going to offer a few reflections. As I mentioned earlier, this is the ninth day of a retreat. So if I'm not making any sense, just uh, let me know. <laughs> um, but I want to mention something that I know that I read in the paper the other day that's relevant to our being here together on Zoom. Maybe you saw it. It's called Zoom Burnout is Real and It's Worse for Women. It was in the New York Times. And basically it said that um, that the fact that we are all staring at each other <laughs> is very stressful because it's uh, it is uh, all right. So it's, it's, uh, it's calling up something called hypergaze. This is a quote, from an evolutionary standpoint, if somebody was very close to you and staring right at you, <clears throat> this meant you were going to mate or get in a fight. Um, constantly being on high alert creates stress. So just the fact that we're staring at each other engenders this response, the stress response. I think it's interesting that staring at somebody means you're going to mate or get in a, in a fight. So I'm just inviting you as we move through the rest of this evening together, uh, the rest of this um, group, that if you want to turn your gaze somewhere else or turn your camera off or do whatever you need to do, that that would be an act of self-compassion. It's a very unnatural environment that we're in. So I'm going to say a few words and then we'll do some more practice. So I really, I was really struggling with what in the world I could say tonight. Uh, like um, so many of you, just judging from what you shared in the chat, and I'm sure what you didn't share. Um, this has been a hell of a week, and I've been saying that as probably you have too for the past year, maybe more. And uh, before I go any further, I wanted to just take a moment for us to all just acknowledge and honor those who have been the victims of violence. I mean, even in the past week, there have been many, many victims. 
just acknowledging that and the pain of that. And holding those folks, probably most or all of whom you don't know personally, holding those human beings in your heart. It's intensely painful to be confronted with that, as you know, all the time. And, and in my own experience, just coming together in groups like this, and I've been in a lot of them lately, probably you have too, can be very helpful. So um, I'm just going to frame our time together and I'm going to share a little bit of what I've been learning from other people. I already shared what I learned from Mills last night and then we'll spend some time practicing. So it was almost three months ago on January 14th, actually it's a little over three months ago that this group came together and we were reflecting on our experience following the Capitol insurrection, remember that? Uh, and we were exploring ways that we might balance, find some balance in our bodies and minds. And um, that night I shared a quote from one of my favorite teachers, whose name is Tanisara, maybe you know Tanisara. Uh, she's a, she was a Buddhist nun and she left the order because of the misogyny. And now she's a great teacher, great advocate for uh, the oppressed and also a great fighter for uh, to save the planet. And uh, the quote that I read was this, mindfulness can always be called upon for the journey through the shadows, transmuting what is found there into love. Mindfulness can always be called upon for the journey through the shadows, transmuting what is found there into love. So reading that now, it just it feels like a really tall order for mindfulness, given the magnitude of the hate and violence that surrounds us today and what it engenders in response in our own hearts and minds. And the shadows that, that Tanisra is referring to, she was actually trained as a Jungian analyst. So she, she's using shadows in that, partly in that frame. She says the shadows are both within us and without us. They are internal and external as the Satipatthana Sutta, the four foundations of mindfulness invites us to be mindful of all that is internal and external. And for me, my external experience recently has been zigzagging between hope and despair, compassion and hate, fight and flight, light and shadow. Maybe that's your experience too. One day I'm buoyed by the hope that perhaps this time justice will be served. And then the next day I'm crushed by yet another act of violence against a person of color or a mass shooting of innocent people. And externally it appears to be the same story. There are acts of courage and compassion amidst acts of violence and hatred. And this is the substance of our practice, the objects of our awareness. And it is deserving of great compassion. So just take a moment and take a breath. And if you choose to, you can look around a little bit. So um, some of you may have heard Nolly Way Alexander. She spoke on Tuesday night at the Truth and Justice Vigil. And she was talking about her own grief and her, her loss of hope, really, her loss of hope for change. And she also described her fear when she thinks about her four-year-old grandson, Jeremiah, 
going out into the world as a black man. And she asked us to connect to our own pain and to answer the question, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? And for me, the answer was so visceral. I mean, my whole body hurts. When I pay attention, my whole body hurts. And it's not fun and it's not pleasant, but this connecting to the felt sense of the body and our personal experience of suffering is where we start this journey towards love and self-compassion. As the trauma therapists tell us, the body keeps the score. No matter what sort of story you're telling yourself, the body doesn't lie. So touching into the, the grief and the fear and the rage and the other difficult emotions in our bodies keeps it real. I noticed on looking again at the comments in the chat, there were feelings of overwhelm and harried and injured and frustrated. These are all, these are, these are all in the body. Where does it hurt? And how does it feel? Most importantly, can we offer ourselves kindness just because it's so hard, because it hurts so much? And what allows us to do this is, is, of course, mindfulness. It's an incredible gift. Imagine what the world would be like if there were more people who were aware of what they were feeling, allowed themselves to feel it, and then were able to meet it with compassion. Perhaps we wouldn't have so many lone shooters with no other way to express their despair than through violence. Perhaps they would find some other way through the shadows to love. Let's take a breath. So as I mentioned, for the past nine days, I've had the great good fortune to be on a retreat with someone named the Venerable Analio, you may know him. He's a, he's a, well, he's, he's so much it's hard to describe. He's a um, German born man who ordained as a Buddhist monk in Sri Lanka and has become the foremost scholar of many of the early Buddhist texts. If you've seen any of his books, they're just full of footnotes and all that stuff that I hate. <laughs> but What's amazing about him is that with all that scholarship, he has this amazing heart. And um, I've just been blown away by his teachings and his, his speaking of his own journey through the shadows to love with mindfulness as his guide. And yesterday he knocked me out when in the middle of a teaching he explained she meaning mindfulness. So the word for mindfulness, sati, is actually feminine in the Pali language. So he refers to mindfulness as she. He said, she is such a good friend. I love her so much. I just love that. She is such a good friend. Mindfulness is such a good friend. I love her so much. And all of his teachings about mindfulness are just imbued with this attitude of love, of non-contention, of letting the mind relax and be at ease as it moves through our experience. It's kind of like, I thought it's like strolling through a, a beautiful forest or settling back into an easy chair at the beach and watching the, the ocean. This is the mind with mindfulness. And this is the kind of uh, mindfulness that engenders kindness, the kind of mindfulness that leads to love. You know, when I first started on this journey, I was taught to aim and sustain the mind. It was a very, well, almost violent to me. You know, very precise, very 
unforgiving in a way. That's how I interpreted it anyways. I'm sure it wasn't meant that way, but it, it didn't feel like it had a lot of kindness in it. So I just love, I love Analia's teaching about this mindfulness as being our companion, our loving companion on our journey towards awakening. So I'd, tonight I'd like to just invite you to join me in this exploration of our internal landscape, uh, accompanied by this gentle, receptive friendliness of mindfulness and compassion. And so I'm going to use some imagery. If your mind doesn't work that way, then you can just let it go and do what you need to do. Just discard it. But whatever you do, make sure that you, you are kind. So before we go to the practice, just any comments or questions about anything that I share? Have you ever thought of mindfulness as a friend? I hadn't. Well, she she is our companion, and it is she mindfulness who can lead us on this journey and lead us to this place of kindness. So I'm going to invite you again to get comfortable. If you need to move in some way um, or hum or whatever you want to do, just take a moment to do that. And so we don't uh, encounter that uh, what, what the, uh, that hyper gaze phenomena that is a causes a stress reaction. If you you won't be gazing at the screen anyways, but you can you're welcome to turn off your camera. And just settle into a comfortable sitting position. Feeling the feet firmly on the ground. The shoulders relaxed. The back straight but not rigid. If it feels right to you, letting the eyes gently close or keeping them open with a relaxed gaze. Discerning for yourself what's needed. I'm taking a few deep breaths. Inhaling down into the belly and then slowly exhaling. And if you choose to, you could leave your mouth open as you breathe this way. So drawing in a few more breaths down into the belly, filling the lungs from the bottom to the top. And then exhaling slowly and completely. And you could even give out a sigh on the exhalation. Allowing the breath to settle in the nervous system. Come to a place of balance, of homeostasis. Breathing in deeply and breathing out slowly and completely. Arriving here, now. And 
And perhaps connecting to an intention. What is your intention? For the practice. For your life, how do you want to be in this life? Allowing that to be the foundation, the ground for your practice as you continue to breathe from the abdomen while allowing the breath to assume its natural rhythm, whatever that might be for you right now. Faster, slow, deeper, shallow. Letting the breath be just as it is. And letting the mind rest on the breath. as though your companion, your sweet companion, mindfulness, we're just floating on the waves of the breath. Nothing to do but breathe and relax. And now gently letting your mindfulness move your attention from your breath to sensations in the body. These bodies that have been asked to hold so much. So starting by finding our ground drawing your attention to the feet, your feet touching the earth. The body supported by our mother, Mother Earth. Receiving her support. Feeling also the support of whatever you're sitting on. Inviting the body to relax into the support of the chair or the cushion. Receiving whatever support you can feel, whatever support you can sense into. This is an act of kindness. And expanding your awareness now to a sense of the body as a whole, allowing mindfulness to accompany you on an exploration of the body inviting her to show you what's there. No parts left behind. Noticing if there are places of tightness Constriction, contraction, 
places that are sore or hurt. And if there are, allowing mindfulness to gently touch these places, to hold them with a kind attention. Not needing them to be different than they are, just receiving them. And as we practiced earlier, if you choose placing a hand or hands on the places that hurt, touching them with compassion, inviting them to relax. So spending a few minutes now letting mindfulness be your guide around the body, accompanying you on your journey. Noticing what's present. Offering compassion to those places in need. Mindfulness, open, kind, receptive. And moving your attention now to the mind. What's in the mind right now? Fear. Rage. Exhaustion. Love. What is mindfulness noticing in the heart mind right now? Pleasant memories or worrisome thoughts? Receiving it all. Naming it. Feeling it in the body. Allowing whatever is present in the mind to be held in the light of mindfulness and embraced by compassion. And discerning if there is something that would be helpful right now. Again, perhaps a hand on the heart or soothing words. Letting your friend mindfulness point the way and compassion freely offer. And 
May I be with this difficulty as best I can. May I meet it as I would a friend. And now giving mindfulness as much space as she needs. Expanding your awareness to the full range of your experience, internal and external. Sensations in the body. Thoughts in the mind. Sounds in the room. A sense of the space within and without. Letting mindfulness take your hand and guide you to whatever is calling her attention. Meeting it with a kind curiosity. Encountering yourself with kindness. Before we end this practice this evening, expanding your attention once again to a sense of everyone in this Zoom room, in this space tonight. So mindfulness could have one foot in your internal experience and one foot in the external, inviting in a sense of connection with everyone here tonight. All of us inhabiting these exquisitely sensitive human bodies with these sensitive human minds. Trying as best we can to live from right intention to live from our deepest aspirations in the midst of so much suffering. So sensing into this shared space and these shared aspirations. Sensing into whatever support you can from this shared humanity. May mindfulness guide us all with love.
May we meet ourselves with compassion. And when you're ready, moving your body in whatever way feels good to you. Well, that's such a skillful means to, to actually focus on the wholesome and what's going well in your life and the ways that you were generous as well. That's a beautiful practice. Thank you. All right. Well, um, I wanted to share a poem and then Jane's going to say a word or two and then we'll share the merit. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a poem. I don't know where I got it from. Maybe you know it. It's called After a Sleepless Night by Elaine Sutton. After a sleepless night worrying about the world, I stand in the whispering grass watching the mountains crouch under their burden of sky. The sun, morning sun glides above the peaks and the field is suddenly flooded with turquoise light. A flock of red wings rise. They turn together like a page of poetry. I read between the lines, realize I am lonely and afraid. I worry about the wars, the weather, the end of our beautiful broken world. I see the way we can harden our hearts when fear is what moves us. Now the marsh hawk cruises the yellow reeds. She dives swiftly and some soft furred creatures life is over. For each of us hauling our basket of dreams, it is only one breath, one breath that divides this world and the next. What is there to do then but to give thanks? Offer praise and gratitude for the sweetness we're allotted. Fling open our burning hearts and help each other. What is there to do then but give thanks? Offer praise and gratitude for the sweetness we're allotted. Fling open our burning hearts and help each other. So I'm grateful that you all came tonight on this beautiful warm night. We haven't had many of them. <laughs> uh, I so enjoy um, this community and your dedication to the practice. And um, thank you. And I'll turn it over to Jane. Thank you. Uh, as, as Jean said, uh, the gift, the most profound gift you each give us is your presence. It allows us uh, to continue this practice and, and it's just a great joy. Um, so this is given freely from our heart to your heart. But as many of you know, the practice of Donna, as we're, Robert was saying, the, the practice of generosity is what keeps common ground going. And so if you want to offer any type of a Donna for this program, you can go on the website and way over on the left far side, it says the tab about us, click down supporting the center. And if you want part of your donation to go to Jean and I, then you have to type in our names under teachers. Um, but again, as Jean said, the, the true gift is your practice and your willingness to be here, even on a beautiful spring evening. So we do this practice not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of the world. And so in acknowledgement of that, we like to end by what's called sharing the merit or dedicating the merit. So just to take a, a moment to just reflect on the goodness of our all having taken this time to be here together with one another. Our showing up is so supportive to the others in the group. And practicing together and sharing whatever we choose to share. So dedicating that goodness 
from our deepest intentions to the benefit of uh, all beings, to the welfare of all beings everywhere. Two-legged beings and four-legged beings, beings with wings and beings with fins, beings seen and beings unseen, and to this great planet, our Mother Earth, May the benefit of our practice be for their benefit. May all beings be free from suffering. May all beings know kindness and compassion. <laughs>